This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test, number four. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. Where did the man leave his camera? Oh no, I haven't got my camera. But you used it just now to take a photograph of the fountain. Oh, I remember. I put it down on the steps while I put my coat on. Well, let's drive back quickly. It might still be there. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. Where will the woman go first after work? Are you and Sarah going straight to the restaurant from work tonight? Actually, I'm leaving work early because I need to do some shopping in the market, and I'm going to meet Sarah after that outside the cinema. She doesn't know where the restaurant is, you see. You're playing tennis after work, aren't you? Yes. So I'll see you at the restaurant. Now listen again. Are you and Sarah going straight to the restaurant from work tonight? Actually, I'm leaving work early because I need to do some shopping in the market, and I'm going to meet Sarah after that outside the cinema. She doesn't know where the restaurant is, you see. You're playing tennis after work, aren't you? Yes. So I'll see you at the restaurant. Two. What can festival visitors see every day? The Arts Centre in London is holding a festival of Irish culture from the fourth to the twelfth of April. An exhibition of paintings is open daily, and on some weekday evenings. The theatre has special events, including plays and films. At the weekend, concerts of Irish music will take place in the town hall. Now listen again. The Arts Centre in London is holding a festival of Irish culture from the fourth to the twelfth of April. An exhibition of paintings is open daily. And on some weekday evenings, the theatre has special events, including plays and films. At the weekend, concerts of Irish music will take place in the town hall. Three. What souvenir will the boy's mother bring? What colour T-shirt shall I bring you from New York, Fred? I prefer black, but. Actually, a baseball cap would be a good idea. Hmm. What about another model car for your collection? I could get you a New York taxi. Great! I really like the sports car you bought me last time. Now listen again. What colour T-shirt shall I bring you from New York, Fred? I'd prefer black, but. Actually, a baseball cap would be a good idea. Hmm. What about another model car for your collection? I could get you a New York taxi. 
Great! I really like the sports car you bought me last time. Four. What time is the woman's hair appointment? I'd like to make an appointment to have my hair cut, please. This Friday or Saturday in the morning, if you can manage it. Let me see. We can do Friday at ten or eleven thirty. Then on Saturday there's nine thirty or twelve o'clock. I'll take the earlier one on Saturday, please. Now listen again. I'd like to make an appointment to have my hair cut, please. This Friday or Saturday in the morning, if you can manage it. Let me see. We can do Friday at ten or eleven thirty. Then on Saturday there's nine thirty or twelve o'clock. I'll take the earlier one on Saturday, please. Five. Where's the TV guide? Have you seen the TV guide? Isn't it on top of the television? I had it when I was watching the film last night. I expect you left it by your chair then. Here it is under the cushion where nobody can find it. You should put it back in its place by the telephone. Then we'd all know where it is. Now listen again. Have you seen the TV guide? Isn't it on top of the television? I had it when I was watching the film last night. I expect you left it by your chair then. Here it is under the cushion where nobody can find it. You should put it back in its place by the telephone. Then we'd all know where it is. Six. What does the man decide to take, Tracy? I'm going to see Tracy in hospital, but I can't think of what to take her. People always take flowers. So she'll have lots already for sure.、Mm. I always think it's nice to have something to read myself, but as Tracy's got her Walkman with her, what about something to listen to? What a good idea! It's better than taking sweets, certainly, because I know she's on a special diet while she's in hospital. Now listen again. I'm going to see Tracy in hospital, but I can't think of what to take her. People always take flowers. So she'll have lots already for sure.、Mm. I always think it's nice to have something to read myself, but as Tracy's got her Walkman with her, what about something to listen to? What a good idea! It's better than taking sweets, certainly, because I know she's on a special diet while she's in hospital. Seven. Which sport has the man just started? Hi. How was your holiday? Great. Really good windsurfing and sailing. You know how much I enjoy them. And horse riding. I really want to go again now I've tried it. And the swimming pool was wonderful too. Much warmer than the one I usually swim in. <laughs> Holidays are just too short. Now listen again. Hi, how was your holiday? Great, really good windsurfing and sailing. You know how much I enjoy them, and horse riding. I really want to go again now I've tried it, and the swimming pool was wonderful too. Much warmer than the one I usually swim in. <laughs> Holidays are just too short. That is the end of part one.
Now turn to part two. Questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a man called John Dalin talking about the travel programs he makes for television. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have forty-five seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. People always ask me why I only travel the hard way. A lot of television travel programs are about relaxing holidays on the beach, but I've only ever made documentaries about really long trips. The last trip I did was a fifty thousand mile journey around the Pacific Ocean, and it took twelve months. But then my very first trip was a round-the-world journey, and the most difficult one was probably a car journey from the North Pole to the South Pole. As you can imagine, I've seen a lot of the world. I'm lucky to be in really excellent health, but life is very short, and I've done so much travelling that I want to change. Travelling long distances makes you extremely tired, and although it's still a great pleasure for me, I want to do something more relaxing now. I think my next television series might be made nearer England. There's some really interesting work going on in Wales, where they've just found what remains of a two thousand year old town. Or I might do something about farms in France, or even cycling in Holland. There's always something to film if you look hard enough. But I hope the programs I've made about the really long trips will encourage other people to get on a plane and have some adventures. Some people seem to be afraid of going to a strange country and perhaps being ill there, but maybe they realise now that if I can do these trips, so can they. I'm only a very ordinary person, and obviously, you don't have to travel on your own as I always have. I must say that until recently, I hadn't ever worried about being so far from home, even when the children were very small. But while I was filming in Borneo last year, my wife had to have an emergency operation, and it really frightened me because I couldn't get back to England. Everything was fine in the end, but I wouldn't want to be so far away if anything like that happened to my family again. Perhaps if I spend more time at home, I can do more writing. I've done two books so far. I write about places I've seen and my feelings about them. I don't think I'll ever write fiction or poetry, but I'd be interested in writing newspaper articles. My family says I'm very difficult to live with when I'm writing at home. Perhaps that's why they've never complained about me travelling, eh? <laughs> Now listen again. People always ask me why I only travel the hard way. A lot of television travel programs are about relaxing holidays on the beach, but I've only ever made documentaries about really long trips. The last trip I did was a fifty thousand mile journey around the Pacific Ocean, and it took twelve months. But then my very first trip was a round the world journey, and the most difficult one was probably a car journey from the North Pole to the South Pole. As you can imagine, I've seen a lot of the world. I'm lucky to be in really excellent health, but life is very short, and I've done so much travelling that I want to change. Travelling long distances makes you extremely tired, and although it's still a great pleasure for me, I want to do something more relaxing now. I think my next television series might be made nearer England. 
There's some really interesting work going on in Wales, where they've just found what remains of a 2,000-year-old town. Or I might do something about farms in France, or even cycling in Holland. There's always something to film, if you look hard enough. But I hope the programmes I've made about the really long trips will encourage other people to get on a plane and have some adventures. Some people seem to be afraid of going to a strange country and perhaps being ill there. But maybe they realise now that if I can do these trips, so can they. I'm only a very ordinary person. And obviously, you don't have to travel on your own, as I always have. I must say that until recently, I hadn't ever worried about being so far from home, even when the children were very small. But while I was filming in Borneo last year, my wife had to have an emergency operation, and it really frightened me because I couldn't get back to England. Everything was fine in the end, but I wouldn't want to be so far away if anything like that happened to my family again. Perhaps if I spend more time at home, I can do more writing. I've done two books so far. I write about places I've seen and my feelings about them. I don't think I'll ever write fiction or poetry, but I'd be interested in writing newspaper articles. My family says I'm very difficult to live with when I'm writing at home. Perhaps that's why they've never complained about me travelling, eh? <laughs>